Mr. Speaker, I rise to lead the debate and in this regard to move for the second reading of the Miscellaneous Financial Services Amendment Bill 2021. The suite of bills, Mr. Speaker, which I will have the honor of moving today can be, can be considered part of our good governance legislative agenda. As a responsible member of the international community, we wish to reinforce our commitments to prevent illicit activities and illicit actors from participating in our financial space and from conducting financial crimes such as money laundering and the financing of terrorism activities or to engage in any activity which would aid and abet the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The Miscellaneous Financial Services Bill 2021, which is now being presented for the second reading, clearly is in sync with the foregoing objectives and broad frame. It represents our efforts to update a series of acts to ensure that they are fit for purpose, that is, they allow us to satisfy the commitment made to the FATF, Financial Action Task Force. The Financial Action Task Force has been described as an independent intergovernmental organization that was founded way back in 1989. And it was an initiative of the group of seven largest advanced capitalist economies. And it represented their efforts then to combat issues of money laundering. Of course, over time, the agenda has been expanded beyond money laundering to issues related to terrorist financing and, of course, actions which may facilitate the development of weapons of mass destruction. So in 2007, for example, the group of seven G7 countries determined that they would want to also focus on terrorism as a global issue. The FATF recommendations are now recognized as the global anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing standard. The Financial Action Task Force has issued a comprehensive set of recommendations which countries around the world have to implement in order to combat money laundering and terrorist financing, as well as the financing of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. These recommendations were recently amended sometime in October of 2020. And compliance with these recommendations, Mr. Speaker, are determined at periodic intervals and countries are expected to pass what is considered the issue or the standard of technical compliance and then the effectiveness test or operational compliance. This method of evaluation is a peer review mechanism by which members of the Global Alliance, which forms the FATF and some other nine other sub-regional affiliates are, are bound by. The bills, and this bill in particular, is intended to ensure that we are updated, we are in sync with current thinking with respect to the fundamental recommendations. We are, of course, part of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, and this is a body which covers the broad Caribbean basin. 
It includes about some 27 states and territories of the Caribbean Basin, including, for example, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Belize, Bermuda, the BVI, Cayman Islands, Curaçao, Dominica, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Grenada, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, Venezuela, and you could add to the list, Mr. Speaker. And we have about some nine other sub-regional groupings in Asia and in other parts of the world where states in a common geographical belt come together to deal with the issues of um, the 40 or so recommendations that have been put in place by the Global Financial Action Task Force. So these nine FATF style regional bodies like the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force join in conjunction with the FATF to constitute, constitute an affiliated global network to combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. Mr. Speaker, as you are aware, we have been working for some time to strengthen our financial services framework in the Federation. And when you look at the minutes, although we did not go into the details of them today, you will recognize though, that there were at least two pieces of legislation which were brought to the Parliament last year as part of this tidying up exercise as we get feedback and information regarding the necessaries which we have to take care of to ensure that St. Kitts and Nevis always will have a clean bill of health when it is being evaluated. Mr. Speaker, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force would have embarked on the latest mutual evaluation process for St. Kitts and Nevis since the last quarter of 2019. However, with the vagaries of COVID-19 pandemic, there was a pause in the follow-up action which ought to have happened in 2020, and so this process is now being done in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Speaker, the mutual evaluation is seen as a tool of the Financial Action Task Force that is used to assess the adequacy of a country in preventing and combating money laundering, terrorist financing, as well as the financing of weapons of mass destruction. The assessment is guided by the Financial Ta Action Task Force's 40 recommendations on these areas. Typically, the full-scale assessment is conducted in a 10-year cycle. St. Kitts and Nevis, I am advised, would have last been assessed way back in 2008 and would have conducted a number of remedial exercises over the years in an effort to strengthen our financial services framework. As the relevant industries would have changed and as criminals would have become more innovative in their unlawful endeavors, it has become equally necessary for us to be on the alert and to be proactive in our approach to tackling organized crimes. And this is in part what these several pieces of legislation are about. Mr. Speaker, the state had sought over the past several years to maintain the pressure in staying on top of the process of adapting and enacting various pieces of legislation to ensure, by and large, that we have an effective response to organized crime in whatever form that it may play out. These interventions have, of course, involved the work of this parliament in passing comprehensive laws and on many occasions amending, as we are now doing today, existing legislation with a view to bridging the gaps between deficiency 
and compliance. Mr. Speaker, in that connection, we have prevailed upon this Honourable House to strengthen the fibre and makeup of our legislative framework from time to time. Mr. Speaker, with these few words by way of an introduction to set the framework as to why we are doing this and why the rest of the world is doing this, Mr. Speaker, I now want to direct attention to the more salient points of the bill. Mr. Speaker, the miscellaneous amendments bill, which similar to what we did last year, is intended to address a number or to make a number of amendments in furtherance of the goal of greater legislative integrity as it pertains to our national security and issues of financial services. The bill is in the nature of what you may call an omnibus bill, omnibus bill, and it seeks to amend the following bits of legislation in this one bill. The Financial Service Regulatory Commission Bill, the Tax Administration and Procedures Act, that should be the Financial Service Regulatory Commission Act, rather than bill. The Tax Administration and Procedures Act and the Anti-Money Laundering National Committee Act and the Anti-Terrorism Act. So in this year, having looked at the evaluation, we have determined that through this single piece of legislation, we will cause a number of amendments in about four related bills, all of which constitute, Mr. Speaker, our effective response to the issues of money laundering, financing of terrorism, issues of preventing the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. If we look at clauses one and two of the bill, they address in the main preliminary matters. Clause three of the bill addresses the proposed amendments to the Financial Services Regulatory Commission Act. And the amendment there seeks to clarify the definitions of what is or who is a regulated person. What is a regulated business activity and what is a regulated entity? While the other proposed changes to the Act are focused primarily on incorporating the element of financing of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Clause 4 of the Bill provides for amendments to the Tax Administration and Procedures Act to provide clearly that the control of inland revenue is the competent authority in relation to tax crimes. Additionally, the legislation seeks to concretize the domestic coordination mechanism between the controller of inland revenue and other relevant agencies. Mr. Speaker, not only is there a strong emphasis for FATF purposes and national cooperation but the strengthening of these measures also facilitates more effective investigations. So in part, this is to provide a legal frame for cost sharing of information across critical entities which must work together if we are to succeed in the fight against illicit financial activities and, of course, financial crimes. The Inland Revenue Department, for example, has its own oaths of secrecy, and so would other government departments. Nonetheless, if we are going to be successful in the fight, we have to have what we have been exercising so well during the pandemic season, so to speak, the all of society approach and have the cooperation and collaboration. Mr. Speaker, in relation 
to the National Anti-Money Laundering Committee. The bill clearly seeks to expand the mandate of this committee to include the aspects of counter-proliferation activity and counter-terrorist activities. So, Mr. Speaker, we started first with a global interest in the issue of money laundering. And as the criminals get better at doing what they do, they have been attention shifted to embody other financial crimes to include issues related to the terrorist financing and, of course, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. And the amendment then to this particular bit of legislation is to give broader scope reference to the work of that committee. Mr. Speaker, finally, at Clause 6 of the bill, we are seeking here to amend Clause 31 of the Anti-Terrorism Act to provide a specific fine in respect of the offense of inciting terrorism abroad. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in essence, these are the proposed amendments and I want to commend the bill to this Honorable House for its consideration and for its anticipated safe passage. To end where I began, it is part of our obligation to demonstrate that we, this beautiful country of St. Kitts and Nevis, stands firm. We stand and our country stands firmly for law and order. We stand and our country stands as a responsible and principled entity with all the rest of the world in its efforts to free the landscape of all manner of crimes. But in the context of the specific of the bill, money laundering, financing of terrorist activities, and the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The bill, as I said before, Mr. Speaker, is not a controversial one. We have to ensure that as the global financial space evolves, that our legislative response, the legal basis on which we will act, that that also evolves so that those who commit crime will have no shelter in terms of being able to point to deficiencies in the law which will render efforts to contain them and to disrupt their illicit activities. They should find no safe haven in any quarter in St. Kitts and Nevis. We have been battling with domestic versus international agendas for a very long time. Going back all the way to the formation of the FATF in 1989, going all the way back to the difficult period of the 90s in which we have had to deal with the blacklisting quote unquote of countries all over the world. By a powerful few, we have come to understand that we have to enjoy several of these organizations. Reluctantly we may go, but we must nevertheless go to where they are pushing us because we have to show ourselves to be responsible and importantly, there are sanctions for non-compliance. And each time the country is blacklisted by any international body, there's a cause. <laughs> Cause sometimes unseen to the majority of the public, but a cause no less real. A cause, for example, of repairing that damage to be removed quickly from the blacklist, which call upon the country to expend significant sums to bring expertise, local, regional, and international, to help it to correct a deficiency in its framework. And of course, the issue of the risking 
whereas your financial space becomes corrupted, develop a perception of harboring illicit actors, there's a cause to pay in that well-meaning international organizations, correspondent banks, will not wish to participate in your financial space. And so you can find yourself being locked off and having to pay more. These ratings and rankings also affect the costs at which we will be able to secure financing from international and regional organization. So the costs are real, seldom seen by the citizen and the resident, but no less real. The costs are even um, shown in our budgets. In our last budget, for example, we committed to establishment of a special international unit in the office of the Comptroller of Inland Revenue, all to ensure that we are more efficient in coordinating our responses to these international imperatives that have been set as part of what is considered an international model of good governance to which this government is committed. So with those few words, Mr. Speaker, I again wish the bell short, deliberate, and succinct as it is, critically important to the good name of St. Kitts and Nevis, critically important to our being able to stand as a people, proud and free, and to say we are small, but we are as effective as any other country, big or large, in meeting our international obligations. May it please you, Mr. Speaker.